Praise the Lord, saints. Again, today we want to welcome you to our Bible class setting by way of YouTube. As always, it is our prayer and desire that these lessons will prove to be spiritual enlightenment, a strength and encouragement, as well as a guidance to your needs, to your spiritual life. And today, we're going to be dealing with the subject matter, it meant seven qualities of a good leader. I think this subject matter is somewhat necessary for us in this time and set in which we're in. We're in the year of a presidential election. Amen. One of the greatest amen, positions of this nation is the president in the capacity in which he served. And we're not going to be spending a whole lot of time on that subject matter, but it is a high level of leadership. And I want you to understand that when it comes to the order of the church, amen, leadership is more so important. So we want to have good, amen, qualities that are demonstrated, amen, that people will be inspired, amen, to follow good leadership, amen. I'm grateful today, amen, for you taking time, amen, to be a part of this particular setting. As always, our prayer and desire that you'll be blessed through it, amen. So today, again, we'll be talking about seven qualities, amen, of a good leader. And this lesson may seem like Amen. It's not, amen, reaching out to the whole, amen, of a church body, but certainly it do affect the entire body. Uh, we at a time now, amen, where we not only are to just, amen, follow in a sense of obedience, but also to follow with the knowledge of what we are following. And to have the knowledge of what we are following, we must have also an understanding of what is required. Amen. When it comes, amen, to a good leader. I use the, amen, term good leader because certainly there are bad leaders. Amen. There are people that have the ability to inspire individuals to follow them that have no good at heart. Amen. For those people that would obediently follow them. So I want you, amen, even in this setting you may be in if you're not a leader in church, amen, to have a clear understanding and be able to recognize Amen. The qualities of a good leader. And if you happen to be a leader, amen, you can use these points that we will, amen, discuss here this evening to help you determine, amen, if you are meeting, amen, the qualities, amen, that's required, amen, for a good leader. Amen. By way of introduction, what do you possess that would inspire others to willingly follow you? That's a question that every leader must ask themselves at some point or some stage. Amen. What is it that I possess that would inspire others to willingly follow me? The key to transforming yourself from someone who understands leadership to someone who successfully leads others is the quality of your character. Your character qu qualities activate and empower leadership or they can stand in the way of your success. Good leaders develop from the inside out. If you can become the leader you ought to be on the inside, you will be able to become the leader you want to be on the outside. Successful leadership is supported with the ability to attract people and to make things happen. Amen. So when we talk about leadership, amen, from a church view, amen, we're not talking about, amen, more so that authoritative type of leadership, uh, that forceful type of leadership. That's more so the type of leadership that the world will use. When we talk about leadership in the church, we're talking about, amen, that leadership that inspire individuals to have a willingness and a desire, amen, to follow those who are in leadership. Now, I will say this to every one of us, amen, we talk about leadership, amen, we are to follow good leadership. You do not have a spiritual obligation to follow anybody that's not leading you according to the desire and the, according to the context of the written word of God. In other words, amen, if I'm a leader that's leading the people wrong, then the people are not obligated and should not, amen, follow my leadership. Amen. There's an accountability. We'll talk about that a little bit in this lesson. There's an accountability, amen, that comes with leadership. So the seven qualities that we will discuss in this lesson the first one would be, amen, practice good character. The second one would be, is a leader that's good, must have charisma. 
And the next one we'll look at, the third one, is that a good leader must show commitment. Then we'll look at, amen, a good leader must have good communication skills. Amen. The fifth one we'll look at is a good leader must be able to show courage. And the sixth one is a good leader must have the ability to listen and hear at the same time. And then the seventh one we'll look at is that a good leader must retain their passion. Amen. We're going to look at these seven qualities, amen, of a good leader. Amen. Becoming that person, of course, amen, that people will be willing to follow. And I want to emphasize that a bit when we talk about leadership in the church. Amen. It's not by demanding anything of anyone. Amen. But it's by your life commanding. That means that the way you live, amen, would inspire individuals to have a desire, amen, to follow your leadership. And the scriptures tell us, amen, that God simply stated that he laid before us life and death. He gave us the option of choosing. So when you talk about a leader, amen, leading, amen, individuals in whatever capacity you may serve in church, amen, you're not talking about, amen, using that leadership style where you amen, demand something of individuals, amen. People have to be able to look at, amen, our leadership, amen, qualities, and be able to make a decision, amen, whether they feel like they can, amen, safely follow us, amen. The first quality that we're going to look at, amen, we talk about the seven qualities of a good leader, is that a good leader must practice good character. Now, some people have the knowledge of leadership, but they don't have the character to back it up. Character defines you as who you are, what type of person you are. In other words, I may be able to be, amen, students in the knowledge of the scriptures. And it's good that I would know the scriptures. It's good that I can, amen, take the word of God and go to a particular subject matter and expound upon that subject matter from the scriptures. But that's not going to be too helpful if my character as a leader, amen, do not back up, amen, what I am teaching the people that they are to live, amen. So the first quality, again, is that a good leader must practice good character. How a leader deals with the circumstances of life tells you many things about his or her character, amen. People deal with life issues, amen, based on the quality of the person that they are. In other words, amen, I may teach you from the context of the scripture, that is wrong to lie, it's wrong to cheat, it's wrong to steal, and all of those things are true. But what's going to make, amen, that teaching more effective to that individual that has personal dealings with me is th that my character, amen, will back up what I teach. Amen. You got to be able to have a character, amen, that don't just be able to have the ability to teach what the Word of God say, but the way you live, amen, the type of person that you are. Amen. Back up the quality of the scriptures that you are teaching. Amen. So again, amen, a good leader, amen, must be able to show forth, amen, character that supports, amen, what they are teaching. Crisis doesn't necessarily make character, but it certainly does reveal it. Amen. When a person runs into, amen, a crisis in life, amen, it's going to start, amen, revealing, amen, what type of character they have. In other words, when people get on your nerves or put you in a tight position, amen, do you feel like, amen, you have to lie, cheat, or steal, amen, to be able to deal with the issues that you are facing, amen. All of that are uh, character traits that would be demonstrated, amen, about who that person is, not by what they say, amen, but by the quality, amen, that is demonstrated, amen, and being revealed in how they, amen, act in tough situations. Ask yourself whether your actions keep up with your words all the time. Amen. If you've been around church long enough, you can talk the talk. Amen. But you've got to stay around church long enough to walk the walk. Amen. That's what, amen, convinced people. Amen. Especially this generation, amen, that have access, amen, to all means of different types of knowledge and inventions of things that, amen, that mostly everything about your life is somewhere revealed. Social media, amen, shows, amen, different sides of a person's life. Amen. So I want you to understand, amen, that we cannot just, amen, have words that come forth when it comes to our character, amen, but, amen, the words that come forth, amen, must be backed up, amen, and supported, amen, by good character. 
Can your handshake be trusted as a legal contract? Amen. When you, when you agree by the shaking of a hand, amen, by way of character, can that person, amen, have confidence in that what you say, amen, you're going to actually, amen, uphold that. And many times, amen, people will not count or consider their character, amen, when they make commitments or they make, amen, agreements with individuals. But I can remember, amen, as a young boy coming up, amen, there was not a whole lot amen, of physical contracts that were did, amen, a person's word, amen, was the contract, amen, if a person gave you their word, amen, if a person stated they was going to do a thing, amen, their word was good enough, amen, so can your handshake be trusted as a legal contract to improve on character, consider the following, first, uh, it, all of us need to search for cracks in our character, amen, I know we may have reached certain levels in our life where Amen. We attain to certain levels, amen, of righteousness, but we are not perfect. Amen. So we got to keep developing our character. So we want to search for cracks in our character, examine major areas in our lives, amen, where you might have cut corners, where you may have compromised, or even may have let people down. Amen. These are character, amen, traits that, amen, must be improved upon. Then if you want to improve, rather, your character, Man, you want to look, amen, for patterns in your life. Amen. Many times we become comfortable in doing things and don't think much of it. Amen. We are comfortable with it, amen, many times because it may work for us. But are those things, amen, good character traits? Is there a particular area where you have weakness or do a specific problem keep resurfacing? Amen. You want to look for those patterns, amen, in your life, amen, that would identify, amen, the weakness. Amen. When it comes to our character. Amen. Also, if you want to, amen, improve your character, you got to be able to face, amen, the situations of life head on. You can't run away from problems. Amen. You cannot, amen, all the time just take the mind frame that, amen, reality is not reality. Amen. Whether we acknowledge it or not, what's real is real. Amen. So we got to be able to face the situation head on. The beginning of character repair comes when you face your flaws. Amen. When you be able to look at your flaws and you're able to, in so many words, amen, say, yes, it is my fault. Yes, I failed. Amen. Yes, I did not uphold my end. Amen. Also deal with the consequences of your actions. Amen. If I do something, amen, that harms an individual, amen, there are consequences that follow. Amen. In, in, in general, amen, if I give you my word and I fail to uphold my word, then of course, Amen. Your faith in what I say, amen, is not going to be readily, amen, received, amen, the next time. Amen. So I got to be able to deal with the consequences, amen, of my actions. Amen. And then you want to always work on rebuilding, amen, rebuilding. If you fall into a place, amen, where your character traits fall lower than what they ought to be, amen, you want to be able to rebuild. After certain areas of weakness have been identified, create a plan that will prevent you from making the same mistakes again. Amen. The value, if there be any, of making a mistake, amen, is learning from it. Amen. If you learn from the mistake that you make, amen, you have now become empowered that that same mistake would not have the same power, amen, if it comes up again. Amen. The next one we want to look at, amen, we talk about the seven qualities of a good leader is that a good leader must have charisma, amen. We're going to talk about that a little bit. It may not, amen, seem like that's something that's important, but, amen, every good leader must have charisma. Most people think of charisma as a mystical influence that is undefinable. Others think we are born with such influence, amen. So when you talk about having charisma, you're talking about having the ability, amen, to influence individuals. Charisma simply is the ability to draw people to you. Amen. If you don't have a certain level of charisma, then people are not going to feel at ease at approaching you. Amen. And we're not talking about, amen, no trickery here. Amen. We're talking about a character trait that has developed in your life, amen, that people are able to feel at ease, amen, by being drawn to you. As all other character traits, amen, charisma can be developed. Charisma can be developed by viewing all individuals in the highest, amen, regards. Amen. If you look at people, amen, in the highest regards and don't look at people, 
as being beneath you, then you place that individual in a position where they feel like, amen, they can come to you. Amen. Sometimes as a leader, you can make yourself so high, amen, that people will not feel comfortable, amen, being able to come to you, amen, in the time of need, amen. So one of the keys to help us, amen, develop good charisma, amen, is to be able to view all individuals in the highest regards, amen. It does not matter, amen, what God may have blessed me to reach, amen. If I'm a leader, I'm still in a position and place and a responsibility Amen. Not to look down on that person. Amen. But to be able to, amen, present a bridge where that person will feel comfortable. Amen. And approaching me in any and every situation. Amen. Where they may need our help as leaders. Treat everyone as though they were a number 10. Amen. Nobody likes to be treated. Amen. As though, amen, they are thought of being less than. Amen. So always treat, amen, individuals, amen, as a number 10. Amen. They're just as important as anybody else. Amen. Always help and encourage others to reach their highest potential. Amen. People will make mistakes. People will be weak in certain areas. Amen. But you have to keep, amen, a level of charisma about you. Amen. That even in their failures, they are still feel comfortable. Amen. That they can approach you. To improve your charisma, consider the following. Amen. Sometimes you have to change your focus. Amen. When communicating with others, make sure too much of the conversation is not self-centered. Amen. That's what I mean by changing your focus. Amen. Uh, you don't want to, amen, bring all the attention, amen, to you. It, remember, it is the person that needs help. You are the leader. Amen. Tip the balance in favor of focusing on others. Amen. Next, you want to make your first impression valuable. Amen. Many times when it comes to dealing with people, Amen. You will not get a second, amen, chance. Amen. Many times people will formulate the ideology about you and amen, even their future events about you based on that first impression. So you want to make your first impression valuable. When you meet someone for the first time, be sure to make a good impression. The first impression may determine if you will get a second meeting. Amen. Sometimes, amen, individuals can be in your presence, amen, for that first meeting. And all they're waiting for is to get out of that first meeting, amen, because they come to a conclusion there will not be a second meeting, amen. So always make your first impression valuable. And then be able to share your ability and your resources, amen. This is going to help you with your charisma, amen. When people see you are not just self-centered, amen. Yes, you are a leader, amen, but you have a heart and you have a mind, amen, towards individuals. Think of how you can add value to a person's life. Amen. It's not all the time, amen, about commanding a person's life or degrading a person in their state of their failures. But, amen, think of how you can add value to that person's life and be able to give freely of your resources. If you have something that can help someone, amen, don't make them beg for it. Amen. But be willing to offer it to them and be willing, amen, to share it with them. The third thing, amen, when you talk about the qualities of a good leader is that a good leader must show commitment. Amen. Anything that's valuable to you is going to call for a high level of commitment. Commitment is the ability to be grounded and attached to that for which you believe. Amen. If you really believe in a thing, you're going to be committed towards it. And it's going to take, amen, a force, amen, stronger than your commitment, amen, to overpower your belief in what you believe. Amen. So I want you to see here, amen, as we go further, amen, commitment, amen, is very important. It is, it is really that driving force, amen, that inspires, amen, good leaders to do what they do. Commitment is always surrounded by one's actions. You cannot have, amen, a proper level of commitment and don't have proper action following it. Amen. In other words, the simplicity of subject matter, if you tell a person that you love them, Amen. There must be actions, amen, that you will show towards that individual, amen, that go further than what you say, amen. Those actions will prove and the things that you do towards that person, amen, that you really do love that individual. It shows that you have a conviction for your beliefs, amen, when you show proper commitment. And amen, if you don't have a conviction for your belief, amen, you're going to fall very, very short when it comes to being committed towards what's required 
amen, for you to be successful. Others will follow you if they are able to measure your conviction by your actions. People are not going to follow you, amen, when they are not, amen, convinced that you are committed. Now, you can teach commitment and you can teach all the tools of being committed, amen, but if individuals are able to see in your life, amen, that those same tools are not being demonstrated by you, amen, as the leader, amen, they're not going to follow you. Amen. So commitment produces four types of people. Amen. There will be there will be cop outs. There'll be holdouts. There'll be dropouts, and there'll be all outs. Amen. So commitment will produce. Amen. Which one we are. Amen. So you want to be an individual. Amen. That will be able to hold out. If you was going to look at this list, you don't want to be a cop out. You don't want to be a dropout. Amen. And then you want to be an individual that'll be all out. Amen. Whatever it takes. Amen. For me to reach, amen, this de destination that's assigned to me and that's required of me, I'm willing to do it. To improve your commitment, amen, you can do, amen, uh, two of the following methods. Amen. First of all, you got to measure your commitment. And you got to know how to measure, it, amen, to determine where you are. Many times, amen, individuals will think they have arrived to a place because they don't have a system, or they don't have a mechanism. Amen. To measure where they are. Now, when I talk about measuring where you are, I'm not talking about comparing yourself to other individuals. Many good leaders have failed because they tried to measure themselves up against other individuals. And you have to always know this. You can never be nobody else. You may be inspired by other good leaders, but you have to also know that's not you. and That never can be you. When God made us, he did something very unique. He made all of us different. And yes, we are, amen, to inspire each other, but we are to be inspired in our own identity, which will come with our own separate abilities. Amen. So, so you got to be able to, amen, to measure, amen, your level of commitments. Uh, spend some time telling up how involved you are and what sacrifices you have made. Amen. This will help you to, amen, to measure your commitment. Amen. If you talk about being commitment and you are not, amen, involved and you're not making sacrifices, amen, if there's always an excuse why I cannot, amen, when it comes to the commitment, then of course it has identified that I'm not committed. Amen. Commitment is going to put you in a position, amen, where you're going to have to overrule some things. When I say overrule, amen, you're going to be challenged with other entities. Amen. That would interfere, amen, with your true commitment. Amen. So you got to be able to measure it. Amen. The next uh, uh, process you can use that will help us to improve our commitment is to use what I call the, the Edison method. Thomas Edison would make profound announcements concerning his inventions before he produced the product. He was good about that. Amen. He would put out there, amen, what he was going to produce. Amen. Even before he did it. Now, to do that, amen, meant that he had to be committed to follow through. He didn't put his word out there. Amen. So if you make your plans public, you may be more inclined to follow through with them. Amen. That's called the Edison method. Amen. Another, amen, uh, tool that will help us to measure, amen, the qualities of a good leader is that all good leaders, amen, must have good communication skills. Amen. I'm not talking about, amen, just so much on how much education you have, but I'm, I'm talking about the ability to get cross, amen, to every individual that you would deal with. Now, if good communication skills meant your level of education, then there would be certain people that you would not be able to communicate with if they're not on that same educational level. So that's not what I'm talking about. Amen. So when I, when I use the term good communication skills, I'm talking about your ability, amen, to deal with every person, amen, by way of communication on what level they actually are on. Amen. We're not talking about me using, amen, a higher level of learning to impress people. Amen. That, that, that's not what good communication skills are. If you're speaking to an audience and you're speaking to them over their head and you have all these high, amen, words that they cannot attain to, amen, you're not communicating, amen, you may be impressing yourself, amen, but you're not communicating, so a good leader, 
amen, must have good communication skills. The success of leadership depends on good communication skills. Many people uh, may not follow you if they're not clear on the directions that they are receiving. Amen. So when I talk about giving good communication skills, amen, you have to be able to come to the level, amen, to where every individual is. You don't want to talk over the ability of people. Amen. You don't want to talk over people's heads to the point that they cannot understand, amen, what you are trying to communicate to them. You can be a more effective communicator if the message is simplified to the intended audience. Amen. Amen. When you're with an audience, amen, that uh, uh, may not be of a college level or college background, and you may be of a college level of a college background, uh, uh, bring it down. <laughs> amen. Bring it down. When you may be dealing with an audience, amen, that uh, are well educated and need to be convinced, amen, that you know what you're talking about, well, now it's time to bring it up. But the key is, is you have to know that audience that you're dealing with. And you have to be able to successfully, amen, deal with that audience. It's not all the time, amen, your knowledge of the subject matter, amen. Sometimes you gotta know, amen, how much to give, amen. You gotta know, amen, when it's time to refrain from. Amen. So when we talk about good communication skills, it's just simply based on, amen, being able to reach that group, that body of people, amen, on the level that they are on so they can really understand what you're trying to communicate towards them. Amen. In order to prove our communication, we can do the following. First of all, be as precise as possible. Amen. When I say precise, amen, be able to hit the point. Amen. Be able to give, amen, directly amen, to, amen, the situation that you're dealing with that people can understand what is the point that you're trying to get across. Amen, do not leave any open ends or unclear directions. Amen, also um, refocus your attention. Amen, be sure your focus is not self-centered. Amen, when you are communicating with people, people don't want to know, amen, that you're just communicating to bring attention to yourself. Amen, so make sure Amen. Your focus, amen, is not self-centered. Focus on the needs and ability of the audience. If you want to communicate well, amen, focus on, amen, uh, their needs and the ability of their audience that you're actually dealing with. And next, you want to, amen, live your message. If you want to communicate without a whole lot of words, amen, be able to live your message. In this world that we live in today, amen, a younger generation, amen, uh, that are well knowledgeable about, amen, church, procedure, and life in general, amen, they're not influenced, amen, by a whole lot of words, amen. They want to see, amen, those words backed up in our life, amen. So if you want to have good communication skills, amen, you got to be able to live your message, amen. You can't tell people to do as I say, amen, just in general, as it used to be in the days of old, Amen. But you got to be able to say, as the scriptures say, amen, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. They can actually look at your life and see, amen, you are not just commanding from the scriptures, amen, but you're communicating the scriptures, amen, by the way you live and your lifestyle, amen, following that positive, amen, demeanor, amen. The next thing we want to look at, amen, when it comes down to, amen, the qualities of a good leader is that a good leader, a man must show courage. Amen. There's going to come a time in all of our lives and what a position, amen, you may serve in, amen, that you're going to have to stand for, amen, what you are trying to teach or get across to other individuals. I said that to say this, amen, the devil's going to find, amen, a way to challenge us, amen, as leaders. Amen. In the different positions that you may serve. Because Satan understands one thing. If he can destroy the head, amen, the body is going to die. And there comes a time when every leader has to show proper courage. Amen. This courage is not all the time. Amen. Going against, amen, those that are in the world that will fight against you. Amen. But sometimes you're going to have to show courage amongst each other. Amen. Sometimes we as leaders. Amen. May get out of place with God. And you're going to have to be able to show, you as the leader as well, you're going to have to be able to show the proper courage. Amen. To be able to withstand, 
amen, any, any opposition or any state of wrong, amen, that hinders, amen, the purpose, amen, of God. So a good leader, amen, must be able, amen, to show courage. If you don't have the ability to see when to stand up and the conviction to do it, you will never be an effective leader because there's going to always be somebody that's going to overpower you, amen, because they perceive you, amen, in a state of weakness. And you got to remember, again, amongst great leaders, amongst good leaders, amongst godly leaders, they're going to also be wicked leaders, amen. So that's why courage, amen, is very, very important. It's not saying that, amen, you're possessing a spirit, amen, where you got to fight against everything or you're walking around with a chip on your shoulder, amen. But it is saying, amen, that you will have the courage, amen, to stand, amen, for what's right, regardless of where the wrong may be. Amen. So a good leader must show courage. If you don't have the ability to see when to stand up and the conviction to, to do it, you will never be an effective leader. Your dedication to potential must remain stronger than your desire to appease others. And this is why, amen, you got to be able to show courage. You don't want to always be in a position that you are trying to appease other folk. Amen. If people are happy because of the righteousness that you're doing, that ought to be enough to satisfy them. Now, when you're dealing with individuals that you gotta make them happy because you're going along with them, even though they are wrong, now you put in a position where you have to choose, whom shall I obey? And, and the question is, shall I obey man or shall I obey God? If that question comes up, uh, a good leader, must be able to show courage that they're going to always obey God. They're going to always walk in the obedience of what the Word of God has laid forth. To improve your courage, do the following. Uh, face necessary oppositions. If there's an opposition that's challenging your courage, you've got to face it. You cannot go and stick your head in a corner. You cannot act like it's not there. You cannot act like it's not real. There's something that I have embraced in life and it's simple in its words, but it means a lot. And that is, regardless of whether we acknowledge it or not, reality is reality. You cannot make reality a falsehood. If it's real, it is real, whether I accept it, whether I acknowledge it or not. If it's real, it is real simply because it's just simply real. Amen. So what I want you to see here, amen, every good leader, when it comes time to improving your courage, you got to be able to face necessary oppositions. Deal with the concern of those that you lead. Amen. When people come to you and things, amen, are not where it should be, you have to have enough courage, amen, to stand for what is right. Next, talk to the person. Amen. Many times we will refrain, amen, from dealing directly with the person. Amen. But you got to have enough courage, amen, in a respectful manner, amen, based on who the individual is in the position of the individual, but, amen, be able to talk to the person. Many times we will say amen and don't mean amen. When I say amen by our actions, amen. So talk to the person, arrange an unconfrontational time to talk to the individual. Amen, that's what I mean by showing courage, amen, to discuss it, amen. It does not mean that you're putting yourself in a position that you're overpowering another individual, but you're exemplifying the courage to deal with whatever needs to be dealt with. Amen. Another quality of a good leader is they must have the ability to listen. When you can listen, now you also gain the ability to hear. Many times people will not hear because they don't have the ability to listen. Uh, keep in mind that you have two purposes for listening. And the first is to communicate and the second is to learn. Amen. Let's, let's look at that again. I want you to keep in mind that you have two purposes for listening. The first is to communicate, and the second one is to learn. Nobody knows everything. And the things that you know, amen, by learning to, amen, listen to people, amen, you can add to the knowledge you already have. Start listening not only for words, but also for feelings. Many times and when people are communicating and you're listening to them, Amen. Their feelings are involved. And many times a person will walk away from you. Amen. Even though you've had a uh, what we may call productive conversation, 
they'll walk away from you feeling like they have not been heard. Uh, hearing a person does not necessarily mean you are agreeing with or giving them, amen, what they may be asking for or feel like they may be even entitled to. But at the same time, amen, everybody likes to feel like, amen, you've heard me thoroughly. And I said that to say this, when you hear a person, amen, thoroughly, amen, you'll be in a position to be able to make a good decision, amen, based on, amen, what you have heard. So keep in mind uh, that you have two purposes, again, for listening, to communicate and to learn. Start listening not only for the words that the person speaks, but also for the feelings and the meaning and the internal messages. Many times, amen, people based on their levels of communication, amen, will speak to you, amen, in what I call sometimes code language, amen. And when you hear a person say, I've had it, amen, when you hear a person say, I'm fed up, that means that the problem did not just start. Amen. It means that you're dealing with something that's ongoing. So if you're dealing with what you think is something, amen, is just a minor, and the person is speaking to you in a larger term, then you will maybe in some sense deal with it improperly because you're not really hearing, amen, the fullness of why the individual is saying what they are saying. To improve our listening skills, let's do the following. Let's meet people on their turf. Amen. When you meet people on their turf, you get the real individual. Amen. You, you, you're dealing with the person in the sense of where they are right now. Amen. So find common ground with people and build your connection with them. Amen. Don't always, amen, in the sense of communication, amen, as a leader feel like you have to dominate, amen, the conversation. Uh, when I'm dealing with people and, and whether I'm counseling them or or trying to help them through a life issue, I want to mostly hear from them. I, I, I like for people to talk until they exhaust the subject matter. Man, because I'm, I'm gathering, and when they're expressing themselves, amen, I'm a able to gather more information. Because many times, amen, people do not tell you the fullness of what you need to hear in four or five sentences. Amen, so you gotta be able to uh, meet people on their own turf. Amen. Let them be able to have a freedom based on where they are in the issue of the situation to express themselves. So find common ground with people and build your connection uh, with them. Listen between the lines. Amen. Also listen between the lines. Amen. Sometimes as being the leader, amen, people will not talk directly to you. Amen. But they'll speak in between the lines. So you got to be able to listen between the lines. Pay attention to the factual content of the conversation as well as the emotional content. Amen. Sometimes people will say things that are not factual. Amen. And you got to be able to not get into debate about so much the factual. Amen. But you be able to hear. Amen. Also the real of what they are saying. So pay attention to the factual content of the conversation as well as the emotional content. Amen. Many times, amen, as people communicate Amen. They may not be able to well communicate in words, but they are able to communicate more so emotionally. Uh, if you learn, amen, about the emotions of people they communicate, many times it'll help you to understand, amen, whether they're having trouble communicating, whether they feel safe communicating, or even sometimes whether they're lying while they're communicating. Uh, there, there's a, a, a spirit of uneasiness Amen. That a person will demonstrate if they're having a problem communicating. And there are all sorts of things that will, you know, encounter that problem of communicating that we won't get into in this lesson. But be able to listen between the lines. And finally, in this lesson today, the seventh quality of a good listen, listen a good leader rather, is that you want to retain your passion as a leader. You don't want to just go through a thing because you are able to go through it. In other words, I do it because I just do it. You want to do things, amen, with some heart, amen, attached to it, amen. That means that, amen, you are in some sense, amen, a part of why you do what you do. So to be able to do that, you got to retain your passion. When we start out with the Lord, amen, we start out with a whole lot of passion. And sometimes because of the elements of what we deal with and Sometimes because of the negative effect 
of what we've had to deal with. If you're not careful, amen, the devil can rob you of your passion. And you can still have the ability, you can still have the knowledge to deal with the situations and the issues, amen, but you will not be as effective as you has been in the, have been rather in the past because there's no more passion there, amen. So passion is the first step to achievement. In other words, you gotta care about what you're doing. And this is why, amen, many times as leaders, amen, when you outlive your passion for what you do, then it's time to move on, amen. When you're not, amen, attached to it any longer, amen, you, you, you're no longer in a position where you can be effective, amen, for the need of what you may have done effectively in the past. Amen. So I want you to see here, amen, that it's very important, it's very important, amen, that we retain, amen, our passion for what we do. Your desire determines your destiny. Amen. If you're, if you're not, amen, connected, amen, to a desire for what you do, then you're not going to more than likely, amen, reach your destiny. You're going to become weary. You're going to become tired. Passion increases your willpower, amen. Whenever you maintain a proper level of passion, then your willpower, amen, is going to be high. That's going to be the driving force that tells you to continue on. That's going to be the driving force that encourages you that you can, amen, reach your destination that you're striving to reach. If you want anything bad enough, you can find the willpower to achieve it, amen. But you got to want it bad enough. It has to have, amen, a value system amen, that's attached, amen, to your passion. To increase your pas passion, let's do uh, uh, the following things. Let's examine our level of passion, amen. Uh, examination is a part of our life in a constant manner, amen, in any level of leadership that we may serve, amen. Examine your level of passion. How passionate are you about your responsibilities, amen? Do it mean Amen. Less to me than what it meant when I got started. Or do it mean more to me now that I understand, amen, everything that's, amen, required of me. Amen. Uh, does your level of passion show? Amen. When you have a high level of passion, amen, it, it'll readily show. It'll be shown by the actions that you take towards it. Amen. Ask yourself, am I increasing or am I decreasing? If you're decreasing, then your passion is no longer there. Amen. That's why you have to examine your level of passion at different intervals in your life. Amen. Associate with people of passion. Amen. Uh, the birds of a flock. Amen. The old saying, amen. Birds of a feather rather flock together. Amen. Make sure, amen, you're not hanging around with people that's going to decrease your level of passion. If you're, amen, with individuals that do not, amen, have the same level amen, of concern that you have towards what you are striving for, then if you're not careful, you'll find yourself decreasing to their level, amen. So you want to associate with people of passion. And that's, that's critical as well because you're gonna find there'll be times when your level of passion will run low and you will need an individual that will help you, amen, to be inspired, amen, to strive on, amen. Passion is contagious. Amen. When there's a high level of passion, amen, it moves you, amen, to be enjoined to that high level. Schedule some time with people who can ignite your passion for your responsibilities. And then uh, when it comes to, amen, helping us with our passion, and we want to examine others. Surround yourself with others that are attempting the same goals. Amen. Make sure that you examine, amen, the individuals that you're around. Amen. Also learn from their accomplishments. Amen. What have they done, amen, to achieve, amen, the successful levels, amen, that they have been able to reach in their lives. I pray today, amen, that this lesson, amen, will prove to have been a blessing to those of us that would have heard here today, amen, seven qualities, amen, of a good leader, amen. To those of you, again, that may not be in leadership, amen, you want to, amen, know these qualities, Amen. If you're going to commit yourself to following a leader. We're at a time now uh, where we really need uh, not just to be able to talk a talk, but we got to be able to live the life and walk the walk. And I believe we're in a time now where every leader is at a place where we need to examine ourselves. 
Amen. To what qualities we are. Amen. Sometimes you can outlive. Amen. Your, your responsibilities. When I say outlive, you no longer have the desire or the passion for it. And now, amen, if I retain that position or that spot, I can do more damage. Amen. By trying to retain something, amen, that I'm no longer qualified for. So every good leader, every good leader, amen, want to be able to express these seven qualities that we listed here today. That is to practice good character, to have charisma, uh, to be able to show commitment, uh, have good communication skills, be able to show courage in a time of need, and then have the ability to listen so you can hear properly. And then, of course, amen, be able to retain Amen. Your passion. Amen. For the work, for the calling that's upon your life. We thank God for you today as always. Our prayer, our desire that something has been said that will be a blessing to your life. Amen. We are praying for you as we trust you are praying for us. Amen. That God will continue to sustain us and keep us. Amen. In this time. Amen. Of COVID-19. Our prayers are constantly with you. Amen. May God bless you until we meet again.